Okay, so we're doing our final adjustments on the plumbing of the eight uh, rocket chambers for the aerospike. Let's light this candle. Video. Nice. <laughs> a lot of people wow, said Wow, look at that. <laughs> you know, a, lot of, a lot of people say, you know, sugar motors are, you know, blow up a lot, but uh, every motor can blow up. Sir, yes, sir. switch on the rocket. Payload is running. Ground control is powering up. You're going to initiate the countdown. There they lit up. Okay, so it's now in flight. Power off. That's the cycle that we'll be using in uh, real life, except the countdown will be a little longer. Do another run to make sure everything turns on the way it's supposed to. And then we're ready to do uh, raise it, fuel it, and fire it off. excitement after four and a half years of waiting. There you go. Oh. There you go. And there was some hissing. So oh, what does that mean? We, we don't know. Oh. So did you kill the pressure? Nope. No? It just equalized itself because it, it stopped hissing. Also, that control room is pretty safe, so it can take a direct hit from big rocket pieces. So like I said, pay attention to what the pyrotechnic operator says. If he says get in the bunkers, get in the bunkers. scrubbed, there was a fire due to a peroxide leak. We we're now in the process of cooling down the rocket and uh, dumping the peroxide that's left so that we can transport the barrels back. Put it back in the truck, bring it back home, and reassess. Not sure if we're just going to build a brand new one uh, with the lesson we learned from all this, or if we're going to try and salvage uh, this and try to fly this airframe. I count it as a success because scrubs are always better than RUDs, and RUDs are rapidly unscheduled disassemblies. No one was hurt, no one was killed. Uh, I was promised burn and smoke, we got it. So we're gonna reassess and do it again.